going to give you a quick section 3.4 overview. Um, I'm going to skip over the first, I'm on page 281, I'm going to skip over the first 29 questions, though I will do another video that will cover those, and we will have to go back and, and hit those, and they'll be, we'll cover those on the next test, but I will do another video for those of you that are working ahead. But let's skip down and revisit one like number 33 on page 281, like we did in class, just to give you a, another uh, review over, over that. Let's go to 2x minus 5 equals 2. Again, the rules of math, they never change. And our goal is to solve this. And that means we are trying to get this x by itself, isolate it, find out what it's going to be when that x gets completely alone. So we ask ourselves, what all is being done to this x? It is being subtracted by the 5. We can see that right here. It's being subtracted by this 5. But it is also being multiplied by this 2, and it is underneath a radical. We can see all of those things are being done to that x. So we have to undo them in, in turn. And since it is being square rooted, then we have to undo that. And because that square root acts as a grouping symbol, we'll have to undo it first. And we undo square rooting by squaring. So we're going to square that to get rid of that square root. But if we square that side of the equation, we can't square one side without squaring the other. So we're going to square the other side as well. And so this squaring of the left-hand side does nothing more than eliminate the square root. So this becomes 2x minus 5 is equal to 2 squared becomes 4. Now this, 2x minus 5, then what is being done to our x here is being subtracted by 5. How do we undo subtracting by 5? Adding by 5. But if we add 5 to the left side, we must also add 5 to the right side. So our x is a little closer to being alone now. 4 plus 5 becomes 9, but it's still not quite by itself, not isolated yet. It's still being multiplied by 2. How do we undo multiplying by 2? We divide by 2. But if we divide the left side by 2, we must also divide the right side of the equation by 2. And so finally we have our x isolated. x becomes 9 halves. Now our final step needs to be, we have to make sure in this case that if we were to put uh, this 9 halves into our original equation, 2x minus 5 equals 2. We have to make sure that it is a workable solution, that it's not going to make our x do anything that is uh, illegal. So if we put 9 halves in there, we're going to see that 2 times 9 over 2 minus 5 does that indeed equal 2. This 2 will take out that 2. It divides away to be 1, and that leaves us with the square root of 9 minus 5. Does that equal 2? 9 minus 5 is 4, so the square root of 4 is that 2? Yes. So our answer is indeed x is equal to 9 halves. Okay, I believe I have time on this video to work one more for you. So we're going to work one that steps it up a little bit more. I'm going to work number 59, which is significantly more difficult because that x has an additional x on the other side of the equation. So it says the square root of x plus 7 is equal to x plus 1. This may have been the same one that we worked in class, but we'll see if it is. If we have this one, then again, we ask ourselves, what is keeping this x 
from being isolated. And we see, first of all, we have an X on either side, but we also have on the left side, we have it underneath the radical, and it's being added by 7. We have to get rid of that, and we get rid of a radical. We undo uh, taking the square root by squaring. And if we square the left side, we must square the right side. Please keep in mind that the squaring of this left side does nothing more than remove the square root. So that leaves us on the left side with x plus 7. However, on the right side, please keep in mind what x plus 1 squared means. It means that we have two of these x plus 1 binomials. So you have to uh, square that properly. You're going to come over here on your scratch paper and you're going to recognize that means x plus 1 times x plus 1. And let's distribute that. And you're going to end up with x squared plus 2x plus 1 when you distribute that. Now that you have that, Let's get the x's all on one side. So let's subtract 7. Subtract 7. So now we have x is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 6. And then we're going to subtract x, subtract x, which leaves us with x squared plus x minus 6 all equals 0. And I'm going to move to another screen so I have a little bit more room. And that, that means that x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. Now, we have learned any number of ways to factor this. We could use completing the square here. You could use the quadratic formula here. But this one will factor quite easily just using the x factor method or one's going to be a plus, one's going to be a minus. How do I know that? Because that right there is a minus sign. And if that last term is a minus, that means that uh, my signs are going to be different. Okay? And what factors will, since that's a minus sign, six up at the top and I'm looking for a one. There's a one right here in front of this x. That's my coefficient in front of my b is one. Um, so what factors will multiply to give me six? One and six and two and three. These are the two that subtract and give me one. And the, the larger number always goes with whatever sign is in the middle since it's a plus uh, one positive one in the middle, my three is going to go here, and two is going to go here. And I'm going to set each one, I'm going to set, oh goodness, I'm going to set each one of these parentheses separately equal to zero. So I'm going to say x plus three equals zero, and I'm going to say x minus two equals zero. And I'm going to solve. So x is either equal to a negative 3 or x is equal to a positive 2. And how will I know which one? I'm going to go back to my original equation, my original problem, which said the square root of x plus 7 is equal to x plus 1. And you can see that if I took that negative 3 and subbed it in right there, I'm going to end up with a negative 2. And I can never take the square root of anything and end up with a negative number. So I can cross that solution out, and it's not going to work. However, if I took this 2 and I said the square root of 2 plus 7, does that equal 2 plus 1? This is the square root of 9. This is equal to 3. Square root of 9 is equal to 3. So yes, that is my solution. x equals 2. That's how that one works. All right. I'm going to do another video that shows you how to do the uh, rational equations. But please understand that will not 
be on this test. It's just for you overachievers. I'll see you in class on tomorrow.